Hey guys, and welcome to Another Day Another Dungeon, a channel where I talk about D&D and we learn together to become better players, dungeon masters, and ultimately storytellers. This video is the first in hopefully a series of videos where I intend to talk about my experiences either as a player or a dungeon master in recent games, uh, what happened in those events and how I have learned from those experiences, maybe how you can learn from those experiences as well. This first episode is going to be focused on narrative timing and the payoff associated with it. We're going to be looking at how sometimes as a dungeon master you want certain events to happen sooner because of the desire for instant gratification uh, in your games, uh, but how sometimes it's better to pace those out a little bit for ultimately the better experience of your players and the narrative overall. So let me set the scene. This was two sessions ago in my current campaign, which is following the pre-written campaign by Dungeons and Dragons called Curse of Strahd. Some of you might be familiar, and I promise there's not gonna be any in detailed spoilers in case you are playing, intend to play, or intend to run this game. There's an artificer in our party who has a bag of holding as one of his infusions. Some of you might be familiar with the class, but if you're not, they essentially get to create certain magical items a certain number of times, um, depending on their level and all such. Not super important. The Artificer has a bag of holding. Now, there's another little caveat to add here, which is that there is sort of some folklore attached to bags of holding. There's this idea, particularly in the domains of dreads, such as Barovia, which is the setting for Curse of Strahd, uh, that there is a creature that inhabits bags of holding. Uh, this creature is known as the Bag Man. Uh, the idea is that he's this terrifying, creepy visage, this tall, slender man-esque character that will crawl out of random bags and attack the adventurers that own them, dragging them into the bag never to be seen again. Now, my party was well aware of this uh, folklore, as it were. We've been joking about it for a couple of sessions ever since uh, near the start of the campaign, the artificer first produced the bag of holding. But one day, one of the party members decided, as a joke, in-game, to reach into the bag and call out for Bagman. This is one of those theorized ideas in the folklore that uh, if you call into the bag, Bagman will come out and grab you. And this particular party member wanted to play around with that idea for a bit of fun, not thinking anything would come of it. I, in that moment, however, decided, you know what? Actions have consequences. <laughs> and I decided, stuff it, Bagman's coming out. But I wanted to put a twist on it. First of all, we were quite early in the campaign and if the mystery of Bagman is true, Bagman would have instantly killed probably everyone in that party and at the very least have dragged that individual in never to be seen again. Um, I didn't want to punish them that much for having a bit of fun. So instead, I flipped the script a little bit. I made Bagman to be an extremely kind of nice and friendly sort of individual. Still horrifying in, in visage, um, but, but quite nice. Uh, and so that sort of struck the party a little bit, was a bit jarring. That was a nice little comedic moment in light of the horror setting. So from then on, Bagman became basically the best friend of that group. He remained in the bag of holding, was there to chat, I was there to collect their goods when they would put uh, their belongings into the bag of holding for storage. Uh, he was a friendly guy and everyone loved him. Now fast forward to the session uh, in question a couple of sessions ago, a couple of weeks ago from here. Uh, the artificer in question that had the bag of holding had reached artificer level six. For those of you that don't know artificer classes particularly well, artificers at level six gain the ability to increase the number of infusions and the uh, complexity, I suppose, or the, the value of, of those infusions. They can get better items, essentially. So this artificer was tossing up, do I keep the bag of holding? Uh, or do I use that slot, which is quite valuable for artificers, they don't get a lot of infusion slots, do I use that for a better item? I wanted to kind of play with them a little uh, emotionally and uh, morally, I suppose, and presented to them the quandary of, well, if you get rid of the bag, what happens to Bagman? Um, they then started to have a chat with Bagman and ask him, does he know whether he can move to a different bag or, or what, what the case may be if, if the bag loses its magic. I then played out uh, in roleplay the kind of emotional self-reflective speech of Bagman. And then as Bagman was in the middle of this self-reflection, the party said, can you come out of the bag? And so the Bagman jumped out of the bag. And at first uh, he was quite friendly, quite nice. 
But as, as they'd made that suggestion, I decided in my mind, in that very moment, no, I want the bag man to be who he's fabled to be, but I want to show that he was far more manipulative and complex than this party could ever give him credit for. And so, as he got out of the bag, he started saying, I'm free, I'm free. But then his tone turned sour. He became quite dark in the eyes, his smile spreading across his face. The bagman had needed, sort of in a way that a vampire does, to be invited out of the bag, as opposed to into a house. And in that moment, he disappeared into a cloud of darkness. The party had released the bagman onto the world. And that was a big moment because it subverted their expectations of who the bagman was and because now they had another terrifying enemy in a land full of terrifying enemies. The story doesn't end there. You see, the party was at a certain place that was quite hostile. They defeated a, a major enemy in the campaign and they had then decided that they were going to venture back to one of their safe houses as a, a place that they were confident was not going to kill them all. <laughs> On the way, I had flashes of the bagman appear before them, sort of as they would turn, they would blink, uh, he would be there and they'd blink again and he'd be gone. Um, I was making some illusions because I had an idea. And I can speak a little bit freely about this because we've actually got to the resolution of the bagman reappearing in the way I had planned. And so I'm not spoiling this for my party. The bagman had been appearing behind a certain character, a sorcerer fighter. When the party finally reached uh, after having those flashes of Bagman, they reached their destination. They were informed by one of the people there that they had found a woman uh, passed out at the doors of their property. That woman had then asked, is Zara here? And Zara is the name of this sorcerer fighter. Uh, they then said that the name of this woman was Riley, who is in fact Zara's mum. This was another big character moment. You see, the sorcerer fighter Zara had been looking for her mother when she'd first stumbled into Barovia. And so I was presenting yet another huge moment in the overall story. Now here's where I think my mistake was made. I introduced the bagman as an evil, manipulative character who had disappeared into the darkness and now presented a threat to the characters in this world. Very shortly afterwards, both in game time and in real time, I had presented another key story moment, being the introduction of Zara's mum. The issue here is twofold, I think. The first is that I didn't give space for those two narrative moments to have their own individual impact upon the story and upon the characters. I.e., the Bagman thing was big, and the Riley thing was big. But the Riley thing, in particular, was likely diminished in its impact because the characters were still reeling from the impact of the story moment with Bagman only in real time, like 10 minutes before. As such, I think I robbed, in particular, that player of the impact of that story moment with their mother returning because I put it so close to another major uh, narrative moment that the whole party felt. The second part of this is that by having them that close together, not only am I reducing their individual impact on the narrative and the players, but I am suggesting that those moments might be linked. Now, here's the thing. They were. The visage of Riley that was sitting in that bed, having collapsed at the stairs of that property, was not Riley. It was the bagman, in disguise. He'd appeared behind Zara and had read her memories of her mother and use that to form an extremely accurate, at least to Zara's perception, image of Riley as a person. I was using that to get in with the party and to stay close to them. I think by having these events so close, that became obvious. Turns out, when I spoke to the party after the reveal had happened in the most recent session that I've run, that that wasn't the case. Most of them did not suspect that, at least not after only a moment of thinking. Some of them had that thought in the very moment of introducing Riley, uh, but then sort of dropped that thought once Zara did some investigation and this picture of Riley was consistent with her understanding of her mother. However, I still think that that moment 
where the individuals in this party thought that this might be the bag man is enough of a failure because again, it's taking away a level of suspense and it's seeding distrust to an extent that I don't think was helpful for this campaign. Distrust in campaigns is not a bad thing if that's used to ramp up tension, particularly in horror settings like in The Curse of Strahd. But I think that the better way of approaching this was to be patient. It was to wait a little longer to introduce Riley so that each narrative moment had its own impact on the story and the characters and so that the characters didn't instantly assume that those two events were linked. That way, when the reveal of Riley being the bagman came to fruition, the party would have also felt the full blow of that as a narrative moment. And then, rather than having sort of one and a half valuable uh, impactful moments, I would have had three. So in short, the simple solution to this was to increase the space between those impactful narrative moments. And I think even in instances where those two events wouldn't be assumed to be linked in any sort of context, I think it's valuable to increase the space between those events, unless they are implicitly linked, in which case that's, that's fine, and you want the party to know that. Um, but I think it's valuable to space them because it gives greater impact to those individual narrative moments. To provide some final thoughts, I think there are two things that I have considered moving forward when I look at uh, certain narrative timing and when to put impactful story moments. The first thing is that I need to be more humble in presenting a story to players. I think it's easy as Dungeon Masters to get caught up in trying to throw one story beat after another to try and show the party that we are great storytellers and we come up with really cool and sophisticated ideas. But I think that that's playing too much into our own pride about our abilities, more than considering what is going to be more impactful and more interesting for the players. The second thing to consider is that the first point about being prideful about our ability to present stories or our ideas in a story is sort of a fallacy. We think that that shows that we're great storytellers. But what really shows that we're great storytellers is that we can be patient. We can be slow and considered in our approach to presenting story moments. That makes a good DM. Someone who can wait those few extra sessions to really give that moment a punch. I hope that this has been an interesting sort of reflection for you, and I hope you might have learned something from it. If you did, feel free to leave a comment. Even tell me about a time when you've had a similar experience, either as a player, watching a DM maybe rush things a bit, or nail it and do exactly the right timing, or as a DM in similar situation to what I've been in. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Hooroo.